Good morning. A big week ahead. Attorney General Jeff Sessions set to testify on the Russia probe before the Senate Intel Committee on Tuesday. Lawmakers dig into tax reform and the health care overhaul and the blockade on Qatar for supporting terrorism enters its second week. Hello, everyone. I'm Maria Bartiromo. Welcome to Sunday Morning Futures. As Attorney General Jeff Sessions gets set to appear on the Hill Tuesday, lawmakers are demanding to see James Comey's memos. Did the fired FBI director break the law when he helped leak them to the press? I'll talk with House Intel Committee member Peter King coming up, along with a one-time colleague of Comey's, former U.S. Attorney Bud Cummins is here. Also, President Trump's agenda, could the push for tax reform and the repeal of Obamacare actually happened by September. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise is with us to walk us through the timeline. That's live. The war on terror. What role is Qatar playing in supporting terrorists behind the attacks like the one in London? One of the richest men in the world this morning tells us why President Trump's tough stance on that oil-rich country could help defeat ISIS. We are looking ahead right now on Sunday Morning Futures. And another blockbuster hearing is in the works. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is set to appear before the Senate Intelligence Committee this Tuesday, going under oath to answer questions about Russian meddling in the 2016 election. His turn in the spotlight coming on the heels of testimony from former FBI Director James Comey last week. Congressman Peter King is on the House Intelligence Committee, and Bud Cummins is with us here in the studio. He is a former U.S. attorney in the Eastern District of Arkansas. He worked with Jim Comey and is now a partner with Avenue Strategies. Gentlemen, good to have you both on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you Good Mary. to see you. Congressman you. King, let me kick it off with you. You being on the House Intel Committee, you want to see those memos from Jim Comey, uh, the memos that he wrote about the president. What are you looking for? I think it's very important first to see what his contemporaneous thought was and also to look at those memos and then try to figure out why he didn't take memos or uh, to prepare memos uh, in his dealings with Loretta Lynch. I mean, certainly she seemed far more intrusive into the Hillary camp, in, into the Hillary investigation than President Trump did in, with uh, anything at all involving General Flynn. So I'd like to see what he was saying contemporaneously. Also, why after the January 6th meeting, he decided to do a memo. This is after he showed the dossier. He asked for the private meeting with President, uh, at that time, President-elect Trump, showed him this salacious dossier. And then uh, Jim Comey felt he had to go back in and uh, memorialize what went on at that meeting. I don't know why he had any reason to distrump, uh, distrust uh, Donald Trump at that stage. If I were President-elect Trump, I would have been wondering why Jim Comey was showing me this. Was this in a way uh, you know, to intimidate him? And I say this as someone who's always had a good relationship with Jim Comey. But having said that, I was disturbed by his testimony the other day. Well, I think you're right. I mean, I think one of the main headlines that came out of the uh, testimony last week was the fact that Jim Comey was a leaker. He leaked uh, data, uh, property of the FBI, uh, to the New York Times via that professor. That's number one, that he's a leaker. And number two, a main headline that came out of the hearing was that Loretta Lynch tried to obstruct the Hillary Clinton investigation, directing Comey to call right. it a matter, not an investigation. What was that all about? I, obviously, she wanted to downplay it, and what it was doing, really, they were the same talking points as the Hillary Clinton campaign was using. So that was, a, to me, a direct attempt to inject politics into what, what was a criminal investigation. And remember, Hillary Clinton was being investigated at that time. Donald Trump has never been investigated. And that's another thing I would like to know. With everything that's leaked out over the last several months, and probably 99% of the country thought that Donald Trump was being investigated. In fact, he was never under investigation. And that's what I felt most frustrating, is being on the Intelligence Committee, we had known months ago that Donald Trump was never the target or the subject of this investigation, and yet nobody tried, nobody in the inside tried to clear that up. They let this whole impression develop that somehow Donald Trump is being investigated. So, right, just again, I, I think the memo is be very interesting to see what his thought was. Yeah, yeah just the opposite. They, in fact, wanted that narrative to go right. uh, and, and actually pushed Absolutely. it pushed it forward. But Cummins, you know Jim Comey for a long time. What do you? I, I want to get back to what we're going to hear from Jeff Sessions on Tuesday. But first, walk us through your most important points from that from that hearing. Well, like Congressman King, I've been a long time admirer of Jim Comey, and I still am. Uh, I was very concerned at the beginning because I'm also a supporter of President Trump. But I, I, I just uh, haven't heard the testimony and thought about it. 
Uh, I think Jim's overplayed his hand here, and there, he's raised more questions than he's answered. Uh, if you go back to the, the, his situation with Loretta Lynch, you got to remember the dynamics here. The attorney general's in charge of the Department of Justice. The FBI director works for the attorney general. It's the attorney general's job to determine if there's improper political influence and to deal with that. When he determined that he didn't like the way Loretta Lynch was manipulating the Hillary Clinton investigation, he just took the role of the attorney general on himself. Where really his, his probably what he should have done, we need to look at what he should have done, and that was go to her and probably offer to resign if she wouldn't change her ways. Similarly, he instead of going to Attorney General Sessions, his boss, if he was uncomfortable or queasy, he just decided to be the Attorney General again and write memos. Why didn't he show those memos to his boss or write those memos to his boss and say, I'm uncomfortable, so Attorney General Sessions could to, could know what was going on, and if he thought there was action that needed to be taken, take it. But for some reason, Jim's decided that he can judge who his boss is and whether to, to let them do their job. So your issue is he should never have tried to fix his boss's obstructionism. I mean, that's, and that's right. what it is. Loretta I think Lynch. because of his background and his, and his reputation that he felt like that he could fix all this, and I think it was a major mistake for him to do that, and he's never undone the mistake, and, uh, and his credibility was was uh, really in jeopardy. Uh, before he was fired, the Democrats uh, uh, were accusing him of, of committing crimes, <clears throat> were using words like appalling and calling for his... So he'd lost credibility there, and now now uh, he, he obviously... I think in retrospect, we can see why the president was so frustrated uh, trying to determine what what was uh, Jim Comey's agenda over there? Yeah. What, what happens next, uh, Congressman King? I mean, in terms of your committee on, on House Intel, are you looking into the way Jim Comey behaved at that testimony? Did he break the law by leaking information to the New York Times? Well, it certainly has to be looked into, either by our committee or the uh, Judiciary Committee, uh, as to whether or not the law was broken, and even if the law were not broken. And I'm not certain exactly how the guidelines put it. To me, it's really unseemly for the director of the FBI, the former director of the FBI, to be leaking through a third party memos to the New York Times. I mean, that's, uh, you, know, you know, man up. Come right out and say, hey, this is what happened. This is what I'm saying happened. Don't hide behind somebody else and leak it out. It somehow creates the impression, what was he doing when he was director of the FBI? Was this the first time he ever leaked something? He seemed like he knew exactly how to do it. So again, it makes you wonder then about all those leaks that were coming out in December and January and February about President Trump. Yeah, what do you expect from Tuesday and this hearing with Jeff Sessions? Are you surprised that Jeff Sessions basically wanted to testify in front of the Senate uh, uh, Intel Committee? If I'm Jeff Sessions, I'm asking questions, the same questions after hearing uh, Jim Comey's testimony. I want to say, why didn't I know what was in those memos at the time you were writing them? I'm your boss, and I think he, he's probably going to come raise those questions and explain that he wasn't able to do his job as attorney general because Jim Comey was not, for whatever reason, uh, reporting to him. Yeah, that's a really good point. He cut him out. Congressman King, what do you think about that? Weigh in here. What are you expecting Tuesday? I, I have a great respect for Jeff Sessions. Uh, I, to me, he's one of the most decent guys I've ever met in politics or anywhere, for that matter. The fact that he wants so quickly to get out on the public stage, public arena, and announce what happened, uh, his version of what happened, I, I think it's very significant. And again, I think you have the media and some Democrats running wild here, right, right away, based on one remark by Jim Comey, ready to uh, almost indict Jeff Sessions. He's a guy who has a, a record of high integrity throughout his career. He's totally open. And so I think he's going to just lay it out and basically say that uh, he was doing his job and he wishes Jim Comey had done his job and, and reported to him the way he should have. You know, or, going back, if, if he said so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm go sorry. ahead. No, please. No, I was just going to say that if Jim Comey was so upset about what President Trump, for instance, said to him about General Flynn, he should have gone right to Attorney General Sessions or said to the president, Mr. President, this is inappropriate. That's why I think this is all ex post facto rationale here, him saying how somehow he thought he was being intimidated or pressured or in any way threatened. Uh, again, if he were, he, he could have stood up and said something at the time. That's what you said. That was his boss. That's right. I, I don't understand. He, he was obligated right. at the time, if he really thought there was a problem, to go to his boss and right. say, Attorney General, the the president is calling me again, and it makes me uncomfortable. Well, you, you and I should take this call together, yeah. and and let's deal with it, and let's tell the president if we think he's he's crossing lines. But instead, he's writing memos to be kept for 
what? Yeah. Uh, it's not and, clear. And where was the memo of, of Loretta Lynch telling him to call it a matter instead of an investigation? For me, that, that, that's right there in your face, obstructionism, but he never wrote a memo about it. See, I mm -hmm. think that's why Jim Comey was fired, because he told the president three times in private occasions that he wasn't inve under investigation, but he failed to do so publicly. He, he allowed that narrative to take place where there was some conversation and collusion going on between the Trump campaign and the Russians. That in and of itself is obstructionism. Yes, I think, I think like I said, I think we can see now now and appreciate more why the president was so frustrated with this guy. Uh, he, he was trying to communicate with him. He was trying to open a dialogue with him, trying to figure out what his agenda was. And for some reason, Jim thought he was an island out there. The FBI needs to maintain its independence, but it's not an independent organization. It, it's under the Department of Justice, and he works for the Attorney General. And for some reason, it was clear that he wasn't really answering to anybody. Right. So, so real quick, before you go, Congressman King, what, what do you want in terms of the memos that you want uh, from Jim Comey? What are you hoping to actually uncover? Uh, uh, first of all, to find out what he was thinking at the time, why he did it, and also to see whether or not he uh, has any memos with Loretta Lynch. If not, how does he explain doing such detailed memos, supposedly involving President Trump, uh, when actually there was one 28-second convers a 28-word conversation we're talking about, and on the other hand, with Loretta Lynch, you had her directly involving herself, interfering with a criminal investigation of Hillary Clinton, and why he kept memos on one hand, didn't on the other. I want to see if he has any memos on Loretta Lynch, and also go through all of the memos he's done on President Trump and look at them from beginning to end, not just excerpts that he's leaked through somebody, uh, you know, to the New York Times. Right. It's pretty extraordinary how politicized this agency has become, Bud. Yes, and, and I think that's part, part of Jim Comey's never run for office, but he stepped into the political arena. I don't know if he saw the, the warning signs when he did it, and, and I think he really hurt himself. When he leaked this memo, I think that was probably a reaction. The president hits hard, and, and Jim, uh, uh, he hit Jim hard yeah. in the public, and I think he reacted poorly to that and leak this memo, and I bet he regrets that, because well, I think it really has hurt his credibility. We'll see about that. Bud Cummins, great to see you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Congressman Peter King, always a pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. How much of this has created a, a, a noise and a distraction for those trying to get an agenda passed? Coming up next, the push for tax reform and health care overhaul. Could a single piece of legislation accomplish both by September? House Majority Whip Steve Scalise will join us on that angle. That's next. Follow me on Twitter, at Maria Bartiromo, at Sunday Futures. Let me know what you want to hear from Congressman Steve Scalise. He's on deck next. Back in a minute. Finally. Ron, they're finally taking down that Schwab billboard. Oh, not so fast, Carl. <sighs> oh, no. Schwab again. Index investing for that low? That's three times less than Fidelity. And four times less than Vanguard. What next? No minimums? No minimums. Schwab has lowered the cost of investing again. Introducing the lowest cost.